You know the Bible says, listen, listen to me. Our salvation is great. What did I say? It's great. In the beginning was the word. That's Jesus, Abby. The word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And there is nothing that was made without him. Nothing was made without him. Which means he creates. When this life of Christ comes on the inside of you, it makes you to become creative. The way you will run your school. Because the spirit of God is on the inside of you. Will be so creative that it will be different from all the other sinners. What they are doing outside. You know it's Christ that created everything that we see now. And we are saying that he's living on the inside of us. And you are not creating anything. You are not creative. But you are only destroying. You are not bearing the real life that you are. The, the, the life of Christ. When we are saying he gave us his life. He laid it down his life. His life is creative. Even when he was here in the flesh. He was giving blind eyes to the blind. People that are blind. Creative. We are yet to come to that realm. Brothers and sisters. That's why I say the church is the answer. To all national and international problems. Even when it comes to research. You can't beat a child of God. If we are really functioning the way God wants us to function. That's the life in the Godhead. Is what the Father comes to share with us through Christ. He said through this I beat all system. Because it's not the life of man now doing research. It's Christ on the inside of us. Excuse me. How did Noah de discover water engineering? Who taught him? Which school did he go? Have you ever thought about it? It's the Father, the Spirit of Christ. So how is it that many children of God now, you just come to a school, they make you principal, you destroy the whole thing. When the thing should be built up and be transformed. You will become the chairman of a local government. And the next thing that we are doing is Ikoje. There is no transformation. They employ you in the office. They can't see a change that, ah, this fellow is unique. We are not living up to the standard of the very life of God that God wants us to live. We are supposed to be a visible expression of the very life of Christ. That's what God is talking about. You see all these philosophers. Bring my professor. And the professor in the world. Match them together. You will see my own professor is special. That's what God is saying. I will make their, their wisdom non-entity foolish. Children of God are a special breed. Brethren. We should not be found pulling down things where we walk. They should look at you as peculiar, as special. That without you, they say things will not work. This woman is not here today. Things are not working. Because of the life of God in us. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. So the wisdom of God brothers and sisters is a place where God God's logic where he makes us to be one with Christ. Look at this verse 25. Because the foolishness of God. What is the foolishness of God here? The you know it's the Greek that says it's foolish. The Jews say it is what? A stumbling block. So what the, the Greeks are calling foolishness is wiser than men. <laughs> the Holy Spirit makes it wise. You see, 
Christ is the wisdom of God. That's how the wisdom of God, the wisdom to handle things come to our heart. When you put your faith in Christ, the wisdom of God, the power of God, all these things come to be in our life. And we are supposed to express them and exhibit them wherever we go. The foolishness of God, which is the cross, is wiser than men. And the weakness of God, what the people are calling weakness, God says he's stronger than men. What man can produce. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Like I told you, this Corinthian is talking about man's wisdom versus God's wisdom. That when you put your faith in Christ, the wisdom of God is imparted to you to do business, for your academic work, to your own research, to do so many things. It makes you to excel. It makes you desired. People want to associate with you. You know there are people that we associate with. They are like tongues. Egun, egun organ. You are not like that. You are like sweet pineapple. The salt of the earth. The light of the world. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom of men, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Christ, Jesus Christ, and you see, that's the wisdom of God. Go to verse 4. And I was with you in weakness, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of what? I'm not using man's wisdom. But how? In the demonstration of the spirit and power. How do you have demonstration of the spirit and power? You put your faith in the cross, then the Holy Spirit. I told you the Holy Spirit always walk around the parameter of the cross. That's how power comes. That's how wisdom comes. From the Holy Spirit, from the very Spirit of God, the, the top person of the Trinity. So the life in the Godhead is made real in our spirit, man. Brethren, Christianity is deep. It's, it's amazing what God has done for us in Christ. The more you identify with Christ, the more the Holy Spirit works wonders in your life. Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. <laughs> you see now, wisdom of men, either you are doing things with your own wisdom, or you are relying on, on Christ's finished work, so that the power of God will now operate in your life. That your faith, your faith is not in yourself, it's not in what you can do, it's not in how smart you are. Even when we run ministry, it's not how smart you are. There are people that use, manipulate people. To get money. They say, if you give one million to me, in the next two months you will become, you will have one hundred million back. That's manipulation. People do that in ministry. There are people that manipulate, even soul winning. When they give altar call, and there is nobody coming forth, they will formulate one thing that will make everybody to come out. To come and give their life to Christ. You are just wasting your time. If it is not the Holy Spirit at work, 10,000 people may come out. Nobody will be born again. Your faith is standing in the wisdom of men. Not in the power of God. When you put your faith in what Christ has done, the Holy Spirit will go and do that, all those things for you. Verse 6. How be it, we speak wisdom. Do you see the issue of wisdom I'm talking about? Among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, hallelujah. Nor the princes of this world, politicians, philosophers. We are not talking of their wisdom that come to what? What does it, what happens to their wisdom? You know what he's saying? He cannot deliver man from sin. 
Many of these rich people you see, philosophers, Agbirinye Uda, Olejija, Anka, Bitanesh, Pornography. Some of them sleep with their children. So it's not the philosophy. It's not. Many of them don't have good home. Because the power of the Holy Spirit to, to relate with somebody else is not in their life. Once their wife doesn't please them or their brother doesn't please them, they become your enemy. Because they are not really, they, they are not really believers. They have not experienced Christ. Look at what he's saying here. <laughs> I like the way the Bible says it. Not the wisdom of this world. Nor of the princes of this world. I want my lady, I want politicians. Nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God. How? In a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained hey, before the world unto our glory. Excuse me. You know, I keep on telling you that the mystery of Christ, the redemptive plan of, of Christ, of God, started before man was even created in the Garden of Eden. This is the evidence again. God ordained it. God planned it. It's God's logic to outwit the devil. God ordained it before the foundation of the world. And it's for your glory. Ah, I thought you would put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. God loves you. He, he planned it for you. It's a hidden mystery. People of the world, they can't see it. Unless the Holy Spirit refuses it to you. That's why you come to the church. The church is not a social gathering. It's a place where you learn Christ. Where Christ is unfailed. As you are seeing Christ, you are seeing who you are. Because Christ is God's thought of you. In fact, Christ is, is God's message about you. You are one with Christ. You are not divided. God puts you in Christ to be one with him. That's the way you should see yourself. You see yourself the way God sees you. Don't rate yourself by how you dress. Don't erase yourself by cosmetics. Don't rate yourself by the type of car you ride. You are one with Christ. Your life is as secure as the life of Christ is secure. No matter what goes on. And when I say this, I say it's spirit, soul, and body. When we were teaching on, on Wednesday, I was teaching. You remember by faith, Enoch was translated, Abi? Eh? And the word translated, I show you three times in one verse. And I said, it's not only his spirit that was translated, it was his spirit, soul, and body. Redemption at three play Because he understood who Christ is. I showed you in the scripture where he was sharing Christ himself. He was preaching Christ, prophesying Christ in his generation. And yeah, yeah. You, I don't know whether you under you are seeing what I am seeing. They knew Christ. They saw themselves in Christ. And yet Christ has not come. What is what is it now that Christ has come? How much more should we experience the depth and the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives? But hardly do we hear gospel being preached now. You know what I see people? They copy people. They copy what other people are doing. That's not ministry. That's not ministry. If you don't listen here carefully, you will, you will think you understand this thing. Brothers and sisters, I pray that the Lord will open our understanding. God ordained this wisdom. Who is Christ is that wisdom. He ordained him for us before the foundation of the world. To our glory. Do you know what it means? To live a glorified life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at what he said. Verse 8. 
which none of the princes of this world knew. I want my lady. I want politicians. For had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Do you see the mystery now? So what's the wisdom of God? What's the wisdom of God? It's Christ. What can I give? They say, let's get rid of him. They didn't know. That's God's wisdom. That we finish them. If they have known that God's, God has planned it before the foundation of the world, that life will come back to man through what Jesus would do on the cross, they wouldn't have done that. That's the hidden mystery that the Bible is talking about. In verse 7, he says, a hidden mystery that had been hidden before the foundation of the world. God ordained it. Why wouldn't identify yourself with something that God has ordained? Any church that is not preaching cross, the cross of Christ, the atonement, the finished work of Christ, any ministry, you better pack your load and, and go out of that. Because it will destroy you. What they will give to you is poison. There is so too much religion in Nigeria. Too much really, many things that we are calling church is nothing but paganism. When you listen to some sermons, you just know they are copying somebody who has not seen the book because they are pulling crowd. People think because they are pulling crowd is working. So me, I want crowd. It's not crowd. It's faithfulness to the message. Then let the Holy Spirit do the work. If they have known the princes of this world, they wouldn't have crucified him. Go on in verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen. Hallelujah. No, he had. Neither have entered into the heart of men the things in Christ which God Shall prepare? Eh? Where did he prepare it? That's the word it is finished that we have been reading in the Bible. The things. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things unseen. Things hoped for. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. You can't love, the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. You can't love him until you understand his love for you. So how do you understand it? What is his love for you? God so loved the world he died. He's, everything is pointing to the cross. There are amazing things that the Holy Spirit has set for us. For our spirit, soul and body for your financial life. The death of Christ covers everything in your life. It brings healing to your back, healing to your kidney. Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God today as a man. You are there. God is seeing you sitting at the right hand of the Father. Sitting in the Godhead. Do you hear what I am saying? You are one with Christ. What is true about Christ, spirit, soul and body is true about you. For all eternity. Eyes have not seen. Ears have never heard. It has never come to your heart. What God has prepared for you in Christ. That's why Christ should be your principal thing. Look at verse 10. But God. Has revealed them unto us. By what? You can know them. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will show you things about me. When the Holy Spirit comes, he comes to unfaith Christ to you. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Go on. And what man knoweth the things of a man, seeth the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. 
they are given to us in Christ. Ah, we can continue on and on. But what I want you to see from the scripture is when the Bible is talking about wisdom, I'm doing all this labor for you to see that I'm not just cooking it, that wisdom what you want so wisdom to all the seal. No, it's not the wisdom, it's in Christ. Your identification with Christ. Take me back to Proverbs chapter 1 as we round up. Chapter 4. Wisdom is what? Do you see the reason why it is the principal thing now? So, don't, don't push Christ out of your marriage, out of your life. So you raise your children, you come back to Christ. Good children. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Pursue it. And with all that getting, get understand, understanding your life. In Christ, see yourself in Christ. When Peter saw Christ, Walking on water. He saw, he saw himself in Christ. He started walking on water too. He became like Christ. But when he started looking at the environment, he started sinking. Focus on Christ, brethren. As a lifestyle, you will walk over every water and adversity of life. Take me to verse 8. Exalt her. That's Christ. You know they use the word her because it's fruitfulness. The picture here is of a woman. It will make your life fruitful. The Holy Spirit will come and dominate your life, dominate your business, dominate your marriage, dominate your children, dominate your children, children, and make you fruitful. Exalt her. Put your faith in her. And she shall promote thee. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. That's the first blessing I want you to notice. Promotion will come. Who will do the promotion? The Holy Spirit. I told you when you put your faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit will then start promoting you. Will promote you. In your business. He will promote you in your academics. It will promote you before men without promoting yourself. Promotion does not come from man, it comes from God. If men promote you, they can demote you. But when you put your faith in this wisdom, the wisdom of God, you begin to define yourself by the way God defines you in Christ. The Holy Spirit will start working for you. 